Good afternoon, everybody. It is your boy, Lewis, and I am back again with yet another video. So, once again, ladies and gentlemen, before you watch this video, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification bell to get the latest and greatest content that I display on YouTube for you guys to enjoy. So, once again, I want to thank you guys for taking the time for viewing this video. I appreciate you guys always, and let's get right into it. You know, at one time in my lifetime, when this dude, LeBron James, was coming into the NBA, and I heard how he was becoming such a big star in high school, and was being extremely hyped by the media before he even played a single NBA game, and was deeming this guy as the next greatest thing to ever happen since sliced bread, I was a big fan of his. You know, when I looked at LeBron, I said, a guy with this much talent as a player that we've almost never seen him before, a once in a lifetime generational talent um, coming into the NBA, I say this, I hope he's not a bust. I hope he has a long and successful career. I hope this guy wins MVPs and wins championships and becomes one of the greatest players ever to ever play the game. And also, and with any player in the NBA that's ever played, the always key thing to a great player, the biggest thing is always his health. You know, can he stay injury free? And I said, I hope LeBron stays healthy for the duration of his career. I said all this. And at one time, I was a huge fan of his. And I glorified on the fact that in just his fourth season, he had helped take the Cavaliers to the NBA Finals. And I said, this is one hell of an, of an achievement. And I said, it's just a matter of time before he wins championships. That was back then in 2007. Fast forward to 2018. And I got to say, although LeBron deserves to be respected, for what he's accomplished in his career, let me tell you right here, right now, he is becoming phonier and phonier and phonier and phonier by the day. And LeBron apologists are like, oh man, you know, and the stands go, oh my God, Lewis, man, you're, you're being a, such a hater. But you notice that I gave his respect in the beginning, but yet you deem me a hater. How in the world am I a hater when I showed him respect. No, that's me being objective. That's not hate. And that's the problem with biased people. They can't distinguish the difference between objectivity and hate. I'm being objective about LeBron. I just said to myself that he deserves what his accolades and he deserves what he's earned in terms of his place among NBA greats. But at the same time, the dude's a phony. He's a phony. It's as simple as that. Like, what I don't understand is how is it that a guy, ever since that he's jumped from team to team to team since 2011, has done a really fabulous job at really feeling himself, has done a fabulous job in going on social media and praising other players? Now, you could say, oh, my God, Lewis, you're making such a big deal. Like, yo, everybody praises other players and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, but you notice that LeBron does it a lot of times, almost every single second, not really focusing on his own team. So if he is so focused on what other players are doing, you get on people, the stands get on objective people and say, oh, you're just hating like other players do it. But it's a problem when LeBron does it. I said, no, here's the thing, because LeBron has been has had this perceived conception of a notion that he is such a great teammate. Can somebody answer me this question? If LeBron is such a great teammate, why has LeBron never attended any summer, any uh any NBA summer league games to support his team when new players come in? Can somebody answer me that question? Because not one time in LeBron's career has he ever came to a to summer league games for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Not once. And you know what's crazy? Even when he was in Miami, he didn't even do that. I mean, I know he played in summer league, but he never attended to see the talent to see what kind of players were coming into the team, any rookies or anything. But this guy is such an unbelievable teammate. Yet you never saw LeBron in a summer league game. And what's so funny is he actually went to a summer he went to summer league games when he joined the Lakers. But see, why did he do that? To give this notion that LeBron is a good teammate, that he cares about his teammates. But why didn't he do that in Cleveland? 
So that that's such a mystery right there. Why didn't he ever attend summer league games when he was a Cleveland Cavalier? Because he didn't care about them. And see, this is the thing that you need to understand about LeBron. He caters more to his friends than he does other people. Because for LeBron, if you're not his friend, he doesn't give a damn about you. And the thing, and the people who choose to be colorblind, he plays people for a fool. Because the thing with LeBron is you have to understand this. As long as you're in awe of LeBron, he will stab you in the back, making you think that he's this amazing person. And then he does all these things. And then you're still blind enough to say it's not his fault. And my question is, when are we going to start giving LeBron James any accountability for any of his actions? Yet, you peep, yet again, the biased LeBron fans are going to sit there and give this guy so many passes. You have a Christmas list of excuses for this man whenever he's supposed to be held accountable for something. And yet, no matter what he does, it could be clearly his fault. But according to the LeBron stance, oh, it's not his fault. You're being an absolute hater. You're an absolute hater. Lewis, you have no idea what you're talking about. You're just hating on LeBron. You don't know a goddamn thing about basketball. I don't, huh? That's okay. As a matter of fact, you're right. I don't know a goddamn thing about basketball. I, I, I sure don't. I don't know anything. You know, I don't know the fact that Michael Jordan's the GOAT, and I don't know the fact that LeBron is supposed to be number one when he hasn't, haven't even, hasn't even accomplished even close to the things that Michael Jordan has accomplished, along with the fact that he had the statistics to back it up. But yet, LeBron has failed so miserably, and yet he is the GOAT. A man who has lost six out of nine NBA finals, a man who has lost twice as many finals as he's won, a man who has as many finals losses as Michael Jordan has rings, a man who has only won 33% of his NBA finals, but yet somehow he is the greatest player to play all time. But, but Lewis, we're not talking about who's won the most championships. It's about who plays basketball better. That's what you got exposed. So LeBron James plays basketball better than Michael Jordan. Okay. So now what you so by LeBron stand logic, your basically your goals are the, to set the standard is you don't have to win an NBA championship. It's an accomplishment for just getting there. I'm sorry. I thought I thought when you come into the NBA it was a matter about winning because every great player who has the dream of coming into the NBA their dream is they want to not only be a great player, but they also want to be remembered as a winner because that's how your, that's how your greatness is measured. It's not just the, statist the statistics that you put up. Did you win when it mattered? But that's the standard that you want to set when it comes to LeBron James. It's okay to make the finals because LeBron has never, never lost in the first round. But yet you failed to mention that LeBron missed the playoffs his first two seasons. Michael Jordan was 1-9 without Scottie Pippen. Yet you failed to mention that Scottie Pippen only averaged 7 points in his rookie season and he didn't start a single game in his rookie year. But Michael Jordan was 1-9 without Pippen. But failed to mention that in 1988, the Chicago Bulls lost in five games to the Detroit Pistons. But the Bulls were 1-9, and Michael Jordan was 1-9 without Pippen, but failed to mention that they lost in 1989 in the Eastern Conference Finals to the Detroit Pistons in six games. But the Bulls were 1-9 without Pippen, but you again failed to mention that the very next year they lost in a seven-game series to the Detroit Pistons when they went to the NBA Finals, and Scottie Pippen did not play Game 7, due, in my opinion, due to anxiety because of the moment, which could cause him to get migraines. But LeBron's never lost in the first round, but again, failed to mention that LeBron missed the playoffs in his very first two seasons. So LeBron never missed the playoffs. He's never lost in the first round. Michael Jordan goes one and nine without Scottie Pippen. Do you see, this is the problem with LeBron apologists. This is called irrefutable, irrefutable facts. This is what they do. Again, 
come up with these blatant statistics without context. These are the same people that I remember last year in 2018 in the second round of the playoffs where they faced the number one seed Toronto Raptors. I remember in game two, LeBron was hitting Michael Jordan type shots. He was hitting fadeaways. He was hitting. He couldn't miss. And I remember what ESPN did. They put up a stat and they said Michael Jordan hit 11 fadeaways in the game. Nobody's ever hit that many fadeaways in an NBA playoff game. I said, you have got to be effing kidding me. So now we're gloating over the fact that LeBron hit 11 fadeaways in a playoff game. Like no other great player has ever hit a turnaround jump shot. Where I've seen Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant hit difficult turnaround jumpers. Right shoulder, left shoulder, no matter. I've seen Kevin Garnett do it. I've seen Tim Duncan do it. I've seen Dirk Nowitzki do it. Like I've seen all these great players do it. Larry Bird. And, and it, uh, yet, but it, no, but none of, the, none of those are as special as LeBron James. Like, he did it like no other player ever did it. This is the damn problem right here. This is the damn problem. So when I hear LeBron congratulate players, other players do it too, man. It's the area of social media. I get it. But like I said, LeBron has to be the center of attention every time. That's somebody who tells me. This is a superstar. I've never met an insecure superstar in NBA history like LeBron James. And ever since he went to Miami, it's like his true colors really came out. And then here's what really pissed me off. This guy goes on his TV show. He had invited Todd Gurley, running back of the Los Angeles Rams, who I actually ended up meeting. I actually ended up meeting him when I was at the Sheridan Hotel in um, L.A., downtown L.A., in California. Uh, We ran into the elevator. And I freaking had Shake Shack. He just asked a question. And I knew who he was, but I wasn't going to make a big deal and just go crazy like the fans. Like, you know, we were there where the whole Rams football team was staying at. And I actually got to see Coach Sean McVay at the time. But he had the the gall and the nerve to talk to this brother and tell him that, oh, the NFL slave owners have a – I mean, sorry, I said the NFL owners have a slave mentality. They're the type of people where it's like, if you don't do anything, you get fired and you get kicked out. Well, that's funny, LeBron, because what you what you mentioned right there is a typical nine to five job. You mentioned a typical job right there where the job of the of the employee is if they don't do what they're supposed to do, they're going to get fired. Yet you don't know a thing about that, because what you do is you get paid to play basketball. You make millions of dollars. Yet you're telling a football player that the NFL owners have a slave mentality, but you don't play football. And what really, what really, really just irks and disgusts me is the fact that you're playing, you're playing the, you're, pl- you're doing this whole victimized victim card. You're taking out this victim card like it's a, like it's a part of a damn Uno game. Oh, look, a wild card because I've been the victim of the fact, but yet don't want to talk about of the fact that you guys get paid millions of dollars. How can you be victimized if you get paid millions of dollars? And this is the problem with LeBron James. And this is why LeBron is LeBron is a slave, not only by Nike, but he's a slave in his own mind. Because he talks with delusional tactics to honestly make people believe that what what he is saying. You need to believe and you need to go by and see, this is the problem with social media. This is the problem with the mainstream media, these sports talk shows that think they know exactly what they talk about. But all they're doing is they're brainwashing you, actually making you think that what they say is, you know, is credible, but it ain't. And what's crazy to me is this is the problem. He is a uh, LeBron is such an insecure guy. This is a problem with a male who was raised by a single mother who went around. Like I said, I don't know their personal story. The personal story might run pretty deep. But again, this is the act of a man who was not raised by a father, by, who was with a single mother. And, and people even forget that LeBron was raised by another family. So quite honestly, this is a guy who got paid $90 million by Nike in a contract before he even played an NBA game. But somehow you're telling NFL players that the NFL owners have a slave mentality when you've been privileged since you were a teenager.
This is what I find ridiculous. And what's so crazy is look how he contradicted himself. He's talking about a typical job. You basically laid out how a typical job works. But not knowing the fact that the athletes are getting paid. And the funny thing is, again, if you're talking about that the NFL has a slave mentality, then why are you on the damn team? If the NBA had a slave mentality, why the hell are you on the damn team? If you have if they have a if they have a slave mentality, you shouldn't be playing sports. But you know why you're going to keep playing sports It's because you make millions of dollars. So are you really a victim, LeBron James? This is exactly what I'm talking about. And the crazy part was when Todd Gurley looked at him when he was saying that, he was shaking his head. But I think in the back of his mind, he was saying, like, wow, I think what LeBron said was kind of low key, you know, racist. But, you know, he really can't say anything. He probably thought to himself about that after that Mm -hmm. show went Mm -hmm. off the air. It's just, again, if he had said something at that moment and had called him out on it, you know, his handlers were going to be right there to take care of it. And that's the thing with LeBron James. You can't say nothing bad about him because if you do, he already has got his team. And they're going to do something. And I'm going to tell you this right now, LeBron. And it's funny how I remember I showed a post on Instagram about Laura Ingram with the shut up and dribble thing when Carrie Champion was in her SUV talking to Kevin Durant and LeBron James. And LeBron was calling Donald Trump all these names and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I was like, okay. And this is what I've come to see with LeBron James. As long as he talks, it benefits Nike. And that's why I said that he is a corporate slave. He's talking about slave mentality, thinking that he's free, but LeBron has been a slave his whole time. And he knows it. And then what I'm telling you is is that Laura Ingram had literally said, I'll invite, I'll have LeBron James if he could come to the show and so we could talk because he should shut up and dribble. And you know what? She's absolutely right because LeBron, that is what you're best at. You're best at playing a sport. You're making it seem like if you know every damn thing and that you could just go around talking about anything because you think you know it all. When you know nothing about slavery, you you should not be talking about race and you should not be talking about politics. But yet you're going to sit there and make it seem like, oh, and then the worst part is the media, along with your fans, want to use the off the court stuff to try to boost you up for the gold status. You know why Michael Jordan didn't talk to the media when it came to about race? And for all these people talking about that Michael was a sellout, you know why he didn't do it? Because Michael was not knowledgeable on that subject. That's why Michael didn't do it. LeBron thinks he knows everything. He thinks he knows about race, but he has no damn idea. He's getting paid to talk, and all that's, that do, all that's doing is benefiting Nike. But yet LeBron has the nerve to sit there and talking about that NFL owners have a slave mentality, yet these players are still playing because they want to get paid. If you don't want to be a slave, quote unquote slave, trust me, I would want to be a slave knowing that I'm getting paid $20 million. Hell, even $2 million. Are you kidding me? Because if I don't want that money, I'm like, oh, you know what? You guys are treating me slaves. While I step down, there are a ton of athletes who would love to be in my position to be able to come in and get paid to be a slave. If it's a slave mentality when they're getting paid money. Wow. Wow. And this is why I've come to the conclusion that LeBron James is a clown and he's a fool. It's so crazy that one time I had respect for him and now it's like I've lost my respect. And what I do is I critique him as a basketball player. This is the same person who went when Charles Barkley criticized him for the way he was playing in the regular season. And when he complained to the media about how the Cavaliers are too top heavy and Charles said, oh, you want all the best players like you don't want to compete. Now, Charles, let's face it, Charles has been trying to go from team to team, so I'm not even going to talk. But when it came to LeBron James, Charles at this point is retired. And Charles is absolutely right. He's 100% right. But yet, LeBron went out, and he said, I'm getting tired of this, and then Charles shouldn't talk, and then he brought up all his personal problems. You see how Charles critiqued him as a basketball player? He never mentioned any off-the-court stuff, and then LeBron brings all of Charles' off-the-court, on- and off-the-court issues. That's, just, that's, that's insecurity. You can't say nothing bad about me or else I'm just going to expose you in front of everybody. That's LeBron James's motto. Because you can't say nothing bad about him. When objective LeBron fans and basketball purists criticize LeBron for his basketball acumen, what do they do? The apologists quickly deem you a hater. You don't know nothing about basketball. You're attacking his manhood. 
when does anything with his manhood have to do with his basketball? Basketball is a sport. Basketball is a team sport. But according to LeBron, when he loses, it's a team sport. When he wins, it's individual. Notice that. Notice how they do that with LeBron James. And it's sickening and it's disgusting. And this is the message that we're sending to um, young kids out there. Because this is the bottom line. When I look at Shannon Sharp, when I look at Colin Cowherd, when I look at Nick Wright, even Broussard. Like I said, Broussard is a phony. I don't care if how many times has he said that Michael Jordan is a go this and that and he's somewhat objective. No, because Broussard for the longest time has been wanting LeBron to eclipse Michael Jordan. He's been for the longest time and he still wants it. It's just, again, he just knows it's probably not going to happen. That's the problem. That's the issue. But quite honestly, LeBron's not going to eclipse Michael Jordan no matter what he does. Another thing. Why do you think LeBron is trying so hard to stay in the NBA by the time his son probably might be eligible to make it to the NBA? You know why? He's trying to have a Ken Griffey Jr., Ken Griffey Sr. moment as to say why he's the GOAT, which his fans and the media will use. He's also trying to stay long enough to try to get that scoring record that is held by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He'll be the statistical po- most points ever scored. And he'll say, hey, man, look, I have the most points ever in NBA history, so that makes me the GOAT. That's what LeBron's driving force is, that scoring record. It's to say he's the greatest of all time because he scored the most points. But you notice that you use one aspect. Just because you're the, you have scored the most points in NBA history, that doesn't mean that you're the greatest player to ever play. That's just one statistic you claim. That's it. But yet these LeBron apologists continue, continue, continue to make up stats out of the blue. And I will be scratching my head looking at that television like, what is going on here? Like, you're doing all this to boost one man? And I said it, I've said it many times, and I'm going to continue to say it to the LeBron apologists out there and to the mainstream media. If LeBron has to tell himself constantly how great he is, if LeBron has to go on social media sites to praise other players. I'm not saying that there's nothing wrong with that, but you notice that LeBron does this and doesn't even really mention how great his team played. He's either talking about himself or he talks about other people, and it's been noted. He talks about himself or other people on other teams. Does he mention about his own team? He doesn't. What is that telling you? Is LeBron really a team player? I don't think so. Here's another thing with LeBron. So if you remember on Christmas, LeBron got injured against the Golden State Warriors. Which on top of the fact that LeBron, it was reported that LeBron had strained his groin because he had heard something pop. So now rumors are now circling around that LeBron has a sports hernia injury. And if you know anything about hernias, hernias take a while to heal. And the rehab process is very, very slow. And I heard that he is possibly going to be out another month, probably until probably after the All-Star break. I don't know what is going on, but I just have this funny feeling about LeBron taking this injury. And like I said, he may be injured and it may be serious. Who knows? But let's face it. LeBron had a minor back injury and he had a minor little he had a little minor little ankle injury and he took two weeks off. And those injuries weren't even that serious. But he took two weeks off. And this was in the season when he shed off all that weight. And it was to me to pass the protocol on the PED testing. And LeBron looked slow. He couldn't jump. Like LeBron looked like he just looked like a shell of himself. And LeBron looked really skinny. Like shed off all, the, all that muscle, all those weight, all those pounds. And LeBron was shooting pretty terrible. He goes to Miami, goes to the, do the biogenesis. Two weeks later, comes jumping out the gym. He's all big and muscle again. And it's the stuff that nobody talks about. And what do the LeBron apologists do in the mainstream media? What the worst thing is they do is that LeBron sends this message along with his corporate sponsors and stuff like that. You need to idolize and worship. LeBron is a prime example of why you should never idolize or worship people in terms of athletes or celebrities. And to be honest with you, they're sending the wrong message. See, I, w- I, appreciate, I appreciate athletes who don't allow the higher elites to take control of their lives. And LeBron has let that happen. And he is a puppet because they make you come out here and make you believe that what he's spitting is actual 
is, is actually true when it's a fallacy. And that's what's so crazy about LeBron. LeBron is a fool, man. Don't listen to anything that he says because he doesn't know what he's talking about. So once again, this is Lewis, man. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about, again, LeBron James. Hope you like this video. Make sure to subscribe. Hit that notification bell. I hope you thank you guys for appreciating the video. Let me know what you guys think in your comments about what I said. This is Lewis once again saying good afternoon, everybody. Have a blessed rest of the night. And once again, I'm out. Deuces. Peace.